Okay, we're back and we're going to do some uh, electricity. Specifically, we're looking at multi loop circuits uh, with resistors and batteries. These are the types of circuits that are, at the first glance, they look pretty tough to solve. Um, this example down here is something with multiple batteries and multiple loops. There's really no way to tell if anything's, if any of these resistors are in parallel with each other because you don't know if the voltage on these different loops and different branches are going to be the same. And that's really the key feature of objects or components that are in parallel with each other. <coughs> so our kind of like traditional way of finding the currents in the circuit um, don't quite work. We can't find the total resistance in order to find the current. So we need something else. The, the trick to this is to make use of the fundamentals. Um, Kirchhoff's rules are fundamental rules of electronics. In particular, we're going to set up equations for each of these loops. We're going to treat each, each loop that we're looking at here as an individual circuit. And we're, we're going to use the Kirchhoff voltage rule, which effectively says that the voltage you put into a circuit, the voltage of your batteries, is all used up. So if you sum up all of the voltage losses of all the components as you go around the circuit, they have to add up to what you started with with the battery. Okay, so as we look at this thing, we're going to imagine the left loop first as being the only thing that's there. Okay, an entirely separate circuit. Now looking, there's two 10 volt batteries in there. If you look at the orientation, each one of these is trying to pump current. Okay. And remember, this is defined for a positive current going clockwise. I, mean, I have no idea what that current would be, so I'm just going to call it I1. Now at the same time, we're going to switch over and look at just the right hand side, the right loop. Treat that as its own circuit. If that existed, you have a 20 volt battery trying to pump current going clockwise. A 10 volt battery is trying to pump current going counterclockwise. Well, you figure that the bigger battery is going to win, so it would be logical to guess that a current is going to flow around like this. And I'll call that I2. Okay, so based on this, what do we do? Well, we're going to make use of the voltage rule and go ahead and set up the equation for each loop. Okay, so for loop one, we know that these, these two batteries are helping each other, so we're going to add them together. It's like having a 20 volt battery. That's on the left hand side of Kirchhoff's rule. And now we go around and we see that we have a, a 4 ohm resistor with current one going through it. So remember that Ohm's law says you can find the voltage across the resistor uh, by taking the current and multiplying it by the resistance. Now the tricky part is, and the one we have to be careful of is that 6 ohm resistor. Now notice what's going on with the currents. We've got I1 going down through it, but the way we're guessing at this, current 2 is going up through it in opposite directions. So we've got the 6 ohm resistor, but the total current going through it could actually be I1 minus I2 since they're in opposite directions. Okay, now think about what would this look like for the right hand loop. Well there we've got a 20 volt battery and a 10 volt battery lined up against each other. They're fighting each other. So we have to subtract those. It's like having a net 10 volt battery inside the circuit. Now here we've got a, a 4 ohm resistor with I2 going through it, a 10 ohm resistor with I2, but now we've got that 6 ohm again with I2 and I1 in opposite directions still, so we have to subtract those. Okay, so let's see what, what these give. Um, that first loop equation is 20, uh, let's see, we have a total of 10i1, and then we have minus 6i2. 
the second loop equation reduces down. We've got a, a 10 volt battery, effectively. We've got, and it looks like 20 I2. And minus 6 I1. Okay, so we've got these, these two equations for the two unknowns. And it's really the most important part. That's the setup. Okay. These are our two loop equations, and we could actually go ahead and solve for I1 and I2 from this. Um, now, to do so, uh, I guess there, there's a few ways I guess we could do this. Um, it's looking like if you wanted to play the substitution game, uh, each equation could be divided by 2. Okay, and it look something like that. And the other one's going to look like negative 3i1 plus 10i2. Okay. Um, from that top equation, uh, again, I, I guess we could just kind of move things around. And if we were to solve for i2 in terms of i1, uh, it looks like we're going to have 5 thirds i1 minus 10 thirds. And then we can substitute that in to the second loop equation and see what we get. We have a negative 3i1. And now we're going to have 10 times i2, which is really 5 thirds by 1 minus 10 thirds. Okay. And it's just a big mess of algebra. <laughs> um, let's see, negative 3 I 1 is negative 9 thirds, so we're going to have 41 thirds I1. Uh, on the left hand side, if I add 100 thirds to both sides, uh, we're going to have 115 thirds. And thirds drop out, and suddenly we, we have something for I1. <coughs> Okay, I would, like always, it seems like we get very strange fractions when we're dealing with circuits. But the point is, you get a positive answer. That's good. That means that we guessed I1 going the, the right direction. Okay, on the, on the left-hand loop, I1 is really going um, clockwise. If we were to substitute that back into uh, one of our equations for I2, you'll see that we get... Um, it's looking like we'll get a, a positive answer for that as well. Um, okay, so I, I plug I1 into that equation, and uh, this is looking like it's going to be <laughs> Pretty messy. Um, uh, on, on top, let's see, uh, 25, 7, 575, all over 3 times 41, 123. <laughs> you gotta love it. And over here, if we have a common denominator multiply both the top and bottom by 41 will be 410 over 123 and last but not least if we subtract those we're going to get 165 120 thirds <laughs> amps for I2 okay 
Again, very strange fractions, but that's not the point. Uh, that also turns out to be a positive number. So I2 is really going around clockwise as well. So that means in the middle we have a current, which is the difference between I1 and I2. Okay, so now all of a sudden we know all the currents everywhere. It all starts back with these loop equations. Okay, this is the important part, that's the physics part of it, where we're using Kirchhoff's rule. Okay, the voltages add up to that of the battery uh, in order to make these loop equations. So uh, there, there's a lot of algebra, it's tedious, you know, that's what we're stuck with. Um, but the point is, even though we can't just find our total resistance, there's still ways to use Kirchhoff's rule. Those are more fundamental in order to figure out what these currents are. So I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.